People who divorced, what was the final straw for you? Story one. She is married to a patient with paranoid schizophrenia, and he and his family do not report their illness. His illusions have always been that his loved ones are conspiring against him. Left the medicine. Relapse. Brought me through hell. I tried to give my heart and soul so that he would understand that I am not the person he thinks I am. But he thought very highly of himself, pushed his illness aside, and used everything I ever told him about my fears and past problems to put me down, make me feel like an intellectually sick person, so that he would feel good. It tore my self-esteem, sanity, resilience, and soul to shreds, and I'm done with the BS. Story two. I told him I was depressed. It was really bad. And he said, I know. I tried to start a conversation, but he just shut it down. So later I pushed harder, and he said, You have nothing to be unhappy about. That was the end of it. It took me a few months, but I got a job and quit. I also learned that I am not depressed. After I was away from him for a while, all my emotional problems disappeared and I felt good. He caused me such feelings. Story 3. She called to yell at me for not canceling a credit card she opened in my name, but decided we didn't need it anymore. I tried to reassure her that I canceled the card two months ago, but she kept yelling that we just got a new card bill. I asked her to scan the bill and send it to me at work. She did, and it was a credit card invoice from... Credit for overpayment on the account at the time of closing. She was so convinced that I was always wrong that she didn't bother to read the document that led her astray. I slept in the office for a couple of nights and then started getting ready to tell the kids and leave. Story 4. Out of the blue, she asked me to translate self-sufficient into English. I got a little suspicious and checked her email for the first time ever. It turned out that she was writing love letters to a guy she met abroad, claiming that she was... Guess what? Free and self-sufficient. She was married and completely dependent on me financially. I gave her a week to pack up and leave. Story 5. After she had a sapphic affair with the wife of the couple we were talking to, when I argued with her about it, she broke down and claimed they were waiting for the right moment to get me and the other man together for a foursome. Eventually it did happen, but then she got emotional and the other couple broke it off. I spent the next six months trying to comfort her pleading for help for her overwhelming insecurities, which were far beyond what I could do on my own, even with my previous training in crisis counseling. She refused, all the time telling me that the problem was me, accusing me of having affairs, etc., etc. It took a while to get to the last drop, and I don't remember exactly what it was. Long story short, she then tried to ruin me financially by taking $100K of my deceased twin sister's inheritance from our joint account without my knowledge. And she was also entitled to half of my $40,401,000. Oh, and she took the 12 ounces of gold her father gave us as a wedding present. And after that, I had to pay her $1,000 a month in alimony and child support. Not to mention I lost most of my possessions that I had acquired during our 15 years of marriage. Story 6. We had to reconcile after her months-long affair with an addict she met in AA. One morning, she made a scathing critique of my deepest vulnerability mocking me and attacking me in a way that only someone I'd been with for 25 years could know. I wasn't even hurt by it at the time. Instead, I had an epiphany that she was irredeemably untrustworthy. Story 7. When you get married, you always have to consider the other person as if you were yourself. When one stops caring about the other, when words fly out of your mouth that you can't put back, the brain remembers the negative more than the positive, unfortunately. After that, it's hard to go back to that wonderful place. I remember my mother telling my brothers, if you want to keep this girl, never hurt her feelings. It tears away the love. Women will stop showing love the way a man wants if you hurt their feelings. Story 8. A friend found my profile on sugardaddy.com looking for guys with more money. She literally cut out a photo of me to use there. I was on the verge of ending it, but it was the motivation I needed. I'm so glad I got out before we had kids or property together. Story 9. Woke up Christmas morning and my ex's neck was covered in geeky to add insult to injury. When I went on Facebook later that day, they had apparently taken a bunch of photos together at various stages of their relationship, and the new woman had posted them and tagged my ex. So not only could I see it, but all of our mutual friends also. Story 10. The third dong I learned from my then-wife was not mine. If it is not clear, there was an affair, it ended, we went to counseling, there was another fool, I ended it. In positive news, my ex and I now have a very strong parenting relationship, and I wouldn't change a thing that happened. I feel like she may have changed since then, but I don't really care because she's a super mom to the kids. And as long as her actions don't negatively affect my kids, I don't care about her intimate life anymore. I'm guessing there was more that I don't want to know about. Story 11. 
I went to see my mother one Easter weekend when he had to work. He even said to go so that my daughter and I would have something to do. I came back the next day and could tell I hadn't fed our cats. Found out the next day, he forgot he was Facebook friends with my cousin, that he was away all weekend because his secret girlfriend had a baby. Story 12. New Year 2013-14. My plans were foiled and I was really confused. She was never a good person in general, but that night she was such a bad person. I was so sick of her negativity and bad attitude about everything that I finally told her to pack up and GTFO. After I did, friends started coming forward with stories about her cheating. Turns out she slept with four different people last year while we were married. Deep down, I knew something was up, but four people broke me. I filed for divorce in a couple of days. I took on all the marital debt in exchange for her not arguing with me about custody of our son. I didn't have the ability to pay for everything, and I just finished digging myself out of that hole two years ago. But to this day, my son and my son have a very close relationship, and I can't imagine how it would have turned out if I had a typical every weekend arrangement. The financial collapse was worth it. Story 13. I could not suffer another day. It was a rushed relationship from the start, and there were a lot of issues that I won't go into. One morning I woke up and told myself that I could not live another day in this misery. I worked out a divorce plan, and after six months he left home and I filed for divorce. I broke up with him the following year. Looking back, I regret the marriage and will never be in a miserable relationship again. Story 14. I got home at six in the morning from my second job, which I had to take to help pay for his NHS. This was on top of driving him everywhere on a suspended license. My children were seven and four years old. I left the house clean, and now it looked like there were people there. When I walked into my kitchen, I saw white powder all over the kitchen counter. Yes, you guessed it. So while I was working on paying for his BS, instead of him watching his kids responsibly, he had a candy party with people I didn't know while my kids slept in the other room. Right then and there, I told him to call his mother to pick him up or I would call the police. He did. His family still supports him, and he tries to convince my kids that we are adults, that I'm the problem after he asks them for money. Story 15. We've already broken up, thought about trying to start over by seeing each other again. We arranged a date night when the reality that I no longer wanted to be with her and was very happy we broke up hit me. She loved her family too much and didn't love mine, and she spent more money than I could earn. I called her back and told her I wasn't interested anymore, and let's work on the divorce. She was shocked but agreed. Story 16. When I realized he had a hidden video camera in our bedroom for at least 15 years, and a library of tapes, after I told him straight up many times that I didn't like it. I'm not shy, but we had kids at home, and he was very careless with his forbidden photos, and he's already admitted to posting intimate photos of himself online. It didn't matter that I asked him not to. Love was not a problem. He is a narcissist who was never going to respect me or my wishes. I knew I could never trust him with anything again. Story 17. She cheated. I found out. She lied. I found out. She lied some more. I found out. She said all the right words, but none of her actions matched her words. She accused me of being too emotional because the lack of emotion was one of the reasons for the affair. It was my fault that she felt entitled to this affair. We went to marriage counseling. She lied a little more and never got in touch. Finally, she told me she just didn't love me. Two months from blissful unconsciousness to the onset of separation. Still, she says she tried to fix it. She tried to work on it. She cares about me. I am broken in many ways. She has been the love of my life for my entire adult life, 24 years since my 18th birthday. And now I am working on cutting her out 100% because just seeing her hurts too much. Story 18. Not married, but engaged, and we broke it off very close to the wedding. She sat me down and explained that in our new family, I was to move in with her parents, raise the kids with her mom, and every single vacation would be with her family not me. The goal of her whole life was to raise children together with her mother, with whom she had such a strange codependency. Sorry, but my kids deserve to know and spend quality time with both sets of grandparents. She married some other dude, had three kids, and when baby three was born, she left him and moved in with her parents. It was her plan and her goal all along. I would just be there. Story 19. It does not depend on one particular straw. These are all straws and then one more. There are different orders of straws. If you find yourself grasping at straws, you're already teetering on the edge. Don't let the last straw pile up and don't keep picking straws. Get help or get out. Don't get the last drop. Cut them with straws in the bud when they appear. If you can't get past the initial drop, then you are already one drop past what is normal or manageable. Everything else doesn't matter at this point. The offense is already there, and now it just builds up to a chaotic explosion of awfulness. Story 20. 
A car that didn't drive unless you put $10,000 into it after you took out the loan without my knowledge. To buy it from a friend, fake gold. Any of his employees who sold things we already had, like pots and pans, knives, dishes, handbags. All this money could be spent on a nice family vacation. He was fake. Story 21. My ex-husband had a video game addiction. Before my first deployment, I wanted counseling so I wouldn't be that military divorced couple. After a session where he was very quiet, does not respond, I needed to go to the toilet. He got really mad at me and tried to make me hold him until we got home. It would take three minutes max for me to pee. Reason? In a few minutes, he had a raid. The entire hour I just spent with a professional working on our marriage, all he cared about was getting out of there and back to the computer. Then I decided that's it. Later, he said that every time I texted him during the day, he got annoyed. He wasn't cheating or anything like that. He just didn't like me. He didn't want it to end because military spouses are very well taken care of. Story 22. My ex-wife got drunk on her own birthday and started acting like a crazy psycho. Like very, very out of line. Birthday or not. She wasn't even that heavy a drinker. But I've never seen anyone act like that before or since. The weirdest thing is that we were staying with some of her old friends from years ago who had just moved in when all this happened. They were super cool people. I can't believe how well they handled this whole situation. It was pretty much over before that night. But after that cow, it really turned upside down. As a thought experiment, if those poor people we visited had called the police, they probably would have punched her dumb peach. And they'd probably be right. Absolute madness! Story 23. I didn't like his girlfriend, but seriously, he was a serial cheater, and I just decided I'd had enough. Our kids were old enough to start seeing things even if I didn't say anything, and I didn't want them to think it was okay to put up due. Because of this, my own self-worth and self-esteem were at rock bottom, and I just decided, no, I'm everything. They filed for divorce and told him a month later. Story 24. When I left, there was a whole bale of straw. But about three years before we actually broke up, when I told him I wanted a divorce, he said, you're not getting my stuff. Indeed, after 29 years, you don't even know me. I don't want your stuff. I just don't want to be around you anymore. If he said, why are you seeing someone else? Can we work on this? I would try to make it work. Story 25. It wasn't the constant body shaming, the job shaming, the bullying, the mockery, all the sweets he had, and then blamed me because we had no money. The drinking that was so bad he couldn't go to the pub without at least ten pints. Then he yelled at me for embarrassing him by not drinking, but also demanded I go home. After a lot of therapy, which I had to hide from him as supporting a friend going through a traumatic period, he threatened to take his own life because life with me still felt like death. It was a fairly common refrain, but this time when he passed out, I packed what I could carry into my bag and left. Story 26. We separated and divorced after two years. I was in the middle of a major mental health crisis caused by PTSD from serving overseas and coming home and working in prison, exhaustion from ridiculous hours, poor health, etc. She decided I had screwed up too much and decided it was best to throw me out, despite my best efforts to correct myself. It took me a long time to realize how unsupportive, manipulative, and selfish she really is. Until the state took her children away from her because of the abuse her boyfriend the guy she cheated on me with and moved in literally the night I got kicked out of the house and put in the hospital, planted the kids. Our divorce was contested and settled in juvenile court where custody was contested. The high court granted my lawyer's request that it be done this way, because the only issue that arose in the contest was the issue of custody, and it would have created too much trouble for the issue to be resolved between the two courts. Story 27 when she woke me up at three in the morning, yelled in my face and slammed her hand on the bed right in front of my face because she found illegal photos on my phone. Even though she told me she didn't care if I looked at the forbidden pictures, this was the fourth or fifth time she had done this. Having been in an abusive relationship before, I knew exactly where this was going. It was only a matter of time before she went from slapping the bed to slapping me in the face to wake me up. There's more, but that's the bottom line. Story 28. When I found a job far away for several months. I tried to get rid of him for so long, but in the end, when he physically left, that's what helped close the door on him. Told him again and again that the marriage would end if he did not solve the problem with alcohol. He was drunk at the airport when we said goodbye. I still don't understand his complete surprise. Like he felt completely blindsided by the fact that I had actually finished and moved on after telling him I was fed up over and over for months, years. He was completely dumbfounded that I actually went through a divorce. Story 29 not yet divorced, but in the process of divorce. I never wanted a divorce. Technically, I still don't. 
My final straw is that my wife doesn't want me back and shows no semblance of concern about ever seeing me again. She moved on, was with her current lover for over a year, and they moved in together. Until recently, I thought that if one day she woke up with a change of heart and came crawling to me begging me to take her back, I would do it without a second thought. But recently that has changed, and I'm thinking she's going to have to do more than just beg me take her back. I don't know what yet, but for the last year and a half she has done some very horrible things to me. I like to think I had some self-respect. Story 30. Slept with my boss and everyone knew except me. Obviously when I found out I was furious. Her husband broke the back window of my car and my ex-husband lied about being hit by a rock. Nonsense. I was over him after he humiliated me. I put up with so much nonsense. It wasn't until he publicly shamed me that I ended it and decided to go ahead with the divorce. Oh, and he used to deliver pizza in my car and his boss employer was the manager of Papa John's. Nothing wrong with Mr. Pappas, but I can't bring myself to eat there anymore. Edited to say you know that feeling you get when you know what people are saying about you. And it's true? All with their new. I was so ashamed I was 22-23 then, that is, almost 15 years ago. He's remarried, has a kid, and I try not to spend too much time thinking about him. I think this is a good question. Story 31. When I found out I was basically a replacement for his pregnant fiance who died in a car accident and he didn't even let me know she existed. I had one limit. Don't lie to me. That's all I asked. I always knew something was wrong with the relationship about a year after we got married. But I thought he was in love with his best friend. He wasn't. It's just that she knew about this other woman and he was talking to her about another dead woman. I just couldn't trust him anymore. Thirteen years of marriage. Poof. Story 32. New here. My last straw after 20 years. Built a new house. Both incomes, both on the house. He told everyone that this was his house and he would never give it up, even though he didn't love me. I left and left the new house, lived in my car for a few months, and finally got my place. I let him take the house and got my own apartment. The happiest I've ever been. Now I'm with someone who is my teammate. I'm broke but happier than ever. Story 33. I was out of town for a week for work and my ex told me that aliens came through the ceiling and implanted a device in her to monitor her. She went on to tell me that she went to her doctor, who told her that she did indeed have some strange unknown device, but she decided to just leave it there. And that was the end. Story 34. Not the last straw, but one of them. I found myself wanting to see how often my wife would initiate any feelings. Hugging, kissing, smacking a peach, literally any action. I put a note in my phone about the date from which I start. I literally did not remember the last time, but I did not count that time. I forget about it, and one day she drops me off at the airport and goes to kiss me. It was so sharp that it reminded me of a note. Eighteen months. Story 35. I was 25 and he was 38. We dated long distance until we got married. I realized what he was really like. Stupid of me, right? I gave him the benefit of the doubt. But in the end, he didn't want to stop getting drunk on the blonde every night, and I wanted to get over my losses while I was still young. Story 36. I came home from the command, and it seemed to me that she was a complete stranger. We talked about it almost immediately. After two months, we said that if something didn't change, we would have to stop working. Only a month later, we had a small fight over nothing that turned into a that's it type of fight. I filed for divorce shortly after, and a few months later, she and our children left the state. Divorce is like a nuclear weapon that goes off in your life, even when you see it coming, and even when you try your best to keep everyone around you from fighting. But soon after that, I met a girl, and she and I have been married for a long time. We have our own children. My ex met a decent guy, and they are married. Together, our children are happy, well-adjusted, and successful. Sometimes the price is so high it scares the cow, but you just have to do it. Believe it or not, you don't have to stay locked in a loveless relationship in your early 30s because you're already 10 years into it with kids. There's still time to jump ship and then spend a few years resurfacing. Being happy is definitely worth it. Good luck there. Story 37. When I was supposed to pick him up from the Orlando airport, there are two levels to match. One level for public transport and one level for everything else. He went to the wrong level and refused to ask how to get to the right level. You are also not allowed to park and wait. I circled the kids in the car near the pickup area for an hour and almost got into two separate accidents before he finally agreed to ask where the next level was. I had a full-blown panic attack. When he got in the car, I made him drive and he scolded me all the way home because it was my fault. This was after I caught him cheating with 16 different women. After years of emotional abuse. After years of financial abuse. After that, I finally decided to leave him. I waited a month or so because he had just lost his father and I was sick. But that was the last straw. Story 38. 
My wife said she hates it when I leave my clothes on the floor. I told her I was sorry for being a messy person. I kept doing it. She took it as an act of war, as if I had done it to break her water. She ends by telling me that when it comes to war, I will never lose. I kept trying to tell her that I work 75 hours a week. I come home, I make the kids dinner, I show, and I step on my clothes when I get out of the shower. When I was a kid, we didn't have a rug, we were broke. Now that I have a three-story house in the hills, I still live like I'm back in grandma's house. You know how many times I slipped and hit my head. She gave me an idea for clothes. My wife doesn't, or she was a stay-at-home mom. And finally, she told my jealous brother. He wanted to be me so badly. She knew how much my brother wanted her. He fell in love with her in high school. He worshipped the ground on which she walked. One day I come home, she tells me with a smile. Pick up your clothes from the toilet floor. I tripped because I thought, no, she left them here after her morning shower. I take them. She is standing behind me. I look and these are my brother's clothes. I turn and she says, what I told you, mom, bad person, I do not lose. I'm tired of being disrespected. He showed me respect. He made love to me. And then he ruined me. I cried and said all this for the clothes. She said, you will never get it. You keep disrespecting me. I told you I hate it when you leave your clothes on the floor. Did I say that this justifies your actions? He told me that I had made the wrong choice and he would never disrespect me. I have loved and trusted this woman for 18 years. She has been with me through my worst times and through the good times. Now I am going through great times and she will not be with me to see it. Shockingly enough, I was ready to forgive her and let it go. I know my brother has been trying for years. He is a great manipulator. That's when I got out. I lie in bed. She lies in bed, kisses my head and says goodnight, as if nothing happened. I said, you know how hurt I am. She said, I don't care. You deserve what you deserve. Four kids together, 18 years old. Everything you wanted I gave you and you're not bad at all. She said, no. How about this every time you leave your clothes on the floor? Just know when you're at work, it's going to turn me over. I have never seen her act like this. I got out and hoped in the car and never looked back. My kids chose her because she blamed me, saying I was cheating on her and would make it seem like it was her fault. She lives with him. Now he cheats all the time. She thought she was the one. He can't keep his job. She works for Dennis. The kids want to be with me, but I told them they would have to stay there a little while. Their actions have consequences they sided with without evidence or reason. I was simply scorned by children to like me if I never gave them the world. Sorry for taking so long. Story 39. He would never help with anything turning thing. Literally not a single thing. The last straw was that something was wrong with my car, and he came with me to the dealership. And he thought that meant he had a right to intimacy that night. I worked full time at a job I hated, so the whole family had inexpensive but fantastic benefits. I took care of our baby, took care of the yard, cooked, cleaned, remembered his whole family's birthdays and sent them gifts for birthdays and holidays, whatever. I did everything. But the lack of any help for years causes a person great resentment. Even when I literally begged him to help with something minor, like taking out the trash, he never did. If it wasn't important to him, it wasn't important. I don't miss him at all. I'd rather do it myself and not have any help, because then at least the constant frustration would go away. Story 40. He was abusive the whole time we were married. I finally realized that I couldn't stand the hitting, the control. He even tried to let me sleep even though I was 36 at the time and the daily verbal abuse. I left with the clothes on my back, my cat and a gym bag that happened to be in my car. The happiest day of my life. Story 41. 30 years with the same man. Then I found out he skipped work and met his ex of 30 years at a hotel. Both drove about 1.5 hours to meet halfway. I sensed something was wrong. So when he went to bed, I guessed his password to his phone. I got the password. I found two months of 50 shades of gray text back. Further between two. I filed for divorce, sold the house, took the dog, moved three hours away from him. He has to pay me child support every month. Story 42. When I finally decided that I had gone 26 years and lost all respect for my ex, and there was nothing he could do to restore it, and I didn't want to spend another 26 years like this, I decided that it would be better to be single and lonely and then marry him. My daughters, in their 20s, both kind of blame me for wanting a divorce, but in time, Maybe they'll understand what I've had to put up with. Unfortunately, the youngest, who was a minor when we separated, was given information or asked questions that were contrary to our agreement. He also lied and dumped me several times. She was also prosecuted in my house, but not in his. It made her write me off, and we don't talk, and the oldest one who has her own issues doesn't talk to me either. And I think part of it is because she doesn't want to be in the middle of me and her sister, and she probably feels he needs to be around his sister.
I told the younger one that if she can admit her mistakes and apologize to me, then my door is open to rekindling the relationship. And I told the oldest that I'm always here to listen or help her if she needs it, and my door is open too. It's all I can do as a parent. Story 43. He decided that no was the wrong answer, and I couldn't say no to him because we were married. Honorable mentions include waking up a few times to him touching me inappropriately and cheating on me. To anyone who is currently in a situation similar to mine, get out as soon as your partner starts crossing boundaries and refusing to let you have those boundaries. You deserve so much better. Story 44. My husband told me that his job sends him out of town to work. This went on for almost two years of him coming home for the weekend until I found out he actually lived in the area and was staying in motels with a candy addict. He didn't use it, but apparently he fell in love with this person. At the same time, he was also dating his ex-wife and took a vacation abroad with her. I packed my things and left the day I found out. Story 45. Twice he tried to leave his first marriage, he returned. It wasn't until he threatened my pets that I finally left. He was abusive and it took me years to finally admit it. The second husband was when I realized that his suffering was affecting my mental health and that he never supported or helped me in anything. After I told him I was done, he magically did all the things I'd been asking him to do for years. But it was too late. Story 46. I wish it was when he threatened to destroy me and bury my body in the National Forest, or when he stole my passport while we were abroad and told me if I didn't marry him, he would light it on fire. But that was when I had a big cancer scare. Woke up the next day after the second round of tests, and he was passed out drunk next to me. I had to carry him to bed the night before, which happened six times a week. I rolled over, saw him sleeping peacefully, and realized that if I was going to die, I didn't want to wake up next to him for the rest of my life. Moved it in the following week. Story 47? The first divorce was not really the last straw. We both just admitted we got married too soon and for the wrong reasons. Our choice was to either not be happy together or go our separate ways. The second divorce, as she likes to say, was an incident with a picky eater. And while it did start a bit of a fight, it was more of a symptom of a bigger problem. For months, she did all sorts of small, seemingly insignificant things that weighed me down and made me feel like she no longer respected me. Every time I tried to talk to her about it, she just laughed. Not her usual laugh, either. It reminded me of when one of the kids was trying to pull a prank on someone, and they just couldn't wait until it actually worked to start laughing about it. So this led to the fussy eaters incident. Basically, every food I didn't like and or was sensitive to now went to dinner every night. If I ate what she cooked, I got sick or at least felt sick. If I did something for myself, we fought. If I cooked, she would take it because I wasn't doing it right and then put things in there that I shouldn't or don't want to eat. Story 48. Seeing that he texted his best friend, I wish I never met my wife on our anniversary. We had a great date literally two hours after he sent that text. He seemed like he was having a great time and was romantic. When I saw how he could pretend to be having a good time, I realized what a good liar he was. Story 49. She found a way to ruin every holiday we didn't spend with her horrible family. To be fair, we agreed to split the holidays, but if she wasn't with her family, she would throw a fit or completely block everyone out and not communicate. Her family constantly borrowed money from her, treated her like crap, and were just horrible people. She ended up continuing to make up emergencies to explain why she had to go to her family and not mine when it was my family's turn to see us. Even if we didn't go on vacation to both families, she would be sad and cry all day about how much she misses her family. Tried to explain that her husband and child are family, but she never perceived us as the main part of the family. I've spent too many holidays alone with everyone asking why she's gone, and I'm sick of it. Story 50. Growing up, my family got divorced when I was little. But the night my dad finalized the divorce, it was because he thought my mother was cheating on him. She was just on the phone with a family friend and said, Good night, I love you, to the person. She grew up in a Muslim family, so it wasn't much of a problem for her. But my dad turned it around. The fight was bad, but unfortunately he was right. My mother cheated, but not with a person. Story 51. I myself have finished more than five years. Found out that my firstborn is not mine. No matter if I raised him, he will always be my son. Also, she slept with at least one of my friends. I saw a video he took and posted on a site. So for the last two years of our relationship, I withdrew and drank quite a lot. She was good to me and the kids. After I figured it all out, I just had nothing to give to the relationship. I only continued it out of a sense of responsibility to our three children. I wanted to try to give them a good life. So at the end of February this year, she sat me down and said, I don't love you anymore. My first thought was that this was my way out. 
It's been a rough few months so far and the readjustment hasn't been easy, but I'm much happier in life now. I'm sad that I don't get to see my kids every day like I do, but they seem happy and taking it well, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters to me. Story 52. When I contracted an STD after being married for 12 years in Japan and being faithful to my ex-wife the whole time. It was a minor STD and went away after two weeks of antibiotics. When she was caught, she tried to commit out of guilt. After that, he stayed with her for a year and paid for her therapy so that she could recover intellectually. It was right when the pandemic started and we were locked down and I'm American and I live in Tokyo. So I was stuck here and had to go through it all by myself in this isolated city. I am getting remarried in Hawaii in three weeks, although already married on paper. But a part of me is still there and will forever be broken. Story 53. IDK person. It was a lot. But I paid for our house and she was able to be a psalm, so she had an affair. But I was more pissed that she wasn't a cat. She's just waiting for me to get home so she can go. No cooking or cleaning. I was still doing all that. One day I had enough and it was over. Story 54. Not me, but my mother. My parents fought as usual, and my mother simply said, Either we work, or we talk about our feelings, or we divorce. All my dad said was, I guess we're breaking up. My dad soon realized what he said and begged my mom back, but she couldn't take it. I am very proud of my mother. Story 55. I never got married because I lived in an environment where all single, never married women, girls, were beyond my financial means. I was mostly seen as a bad financial prospect, so none of my girlfriends stayed with me for long. I was just a good guy to have a good time with. Reading this thread makes me so glad I never got married. Today I am financially stable, have no debts and no dependents. Story 56. I was accused of treason when I threw a balloon on my cousin's wife's head. Also, we started fighting in front of our kids and I didn't want them around. Now we are very happy with other people and as best friends. Sometimes two people don't love each other romantically, so they're better off being friends. I wish the best for her and her family, and I hope the feeling is reciprocated on her part. In addition, I am very active in the lives of all my children. Story 57. She lost her job and could not find another for almost a year. She told me that she had been fired from every job she had ever had. She worked at her mother's non-profit organization and described how she felt about the CEO, who was a family friend. Probably I would have fired her. There were many problems, but she pretended to live together, but clearly not. I asked her to find a job and she got mad at me. I pay her child support and magically got a part-time job when she found out I was using dating apps, so I could afford to take women on dates. I don't understand her logic. All I can say is cool job. Story 58. My parents married in 1992 and divorced in 2003. Jay never divorced, just lived separately, and we had to go back and forth during the week. My dad is an alcoholic and violent. Until March of this year, my dad, who always thought he and my mom should have been together and could have gotten back together, is asking for a divorce. He's probably going to marry his girlfriend. I'm still trying to figure out why the divorce is happening now but I think his girlfriend insisted on getting married. Story 59. He often told me that I wouldn't graduate and why even try if I was too stupid for it. He made a fuss about me going to my mother's for lunch when he left me with no means of subsistence and no food for a week. My money was his money and what was his I was not to touch. The end was when he told me that I should kill myself and go drown. Peace. I finished my first degree six months after my divorce and will finish my master's this year. Story 60. When I realized that I would rather work than stay at home, I found any excuse not to be at home. It was out of business and hadn't been in business for the past few years. Didn't even try to find a job. Everything was under him. When we couldn't afford something he wanted, it was somehow my fault. After leaving, I finally realized how manipulative and emotionally abusive he was. I also found out that he was taking out credit cards in my name and in his son's name, and that he had a child that no one knew about years ago. He had four children, but he never had a relationship with the mother of the unknown child, I believe, and the child ended up in foster care and then adopted. I found this out when I was selling the house when it turned out he was in child support arrears. In addition, it turned out that he lied about being in the military, so many lies that I didn't even know existed, and about some of them. His family and friends knew and did not say a word for all 15 years when we were together. It was extremely unfortunate to find out later. Story 61. We got into a heated argument. Without all the details, we were both very, very full. It escalated, and we had already broken up, meaning I went several times that year. That night, everything exploded. We were both screaming and miserable for quite some time. There was almost no close relationship. We lived separate lives on different schedules for several years. She tried to strangle me. I pulled her away from me. She tried to strangle me again. 
I pulled her away from me. After things cooled down during the de-escalation, she went through the motions again, trying to defend her actions. She came home a few days later and told me that I had to get all my things out by Friday, or she would tell the police that I tried to strangle her. I left this was the last straw. Story 62. Returned from deployment in 2013 and learned from my sister that my wife was sleeping next to me. She caught my wife in a bar making out with some guy a couple of weeks before I got home. My sister and I were arranging a surprise return for my family. Instead, I served her with divorce papers at her job, paid the landlord we rented from to change the locks and packed all her belongings, and prepared for her to pick them up and withdraw all the money from our accounts, gave her half of what was there, and sent her on her way. Fortunately, we did not have children, so the divorce was quite quick and easy. Haven't heard from her since. Story 63. I finally got to the point where I realized that I would never be enough for her. No matter how much I did for the family, how much I worked, and how many attempts at couples counseling I made, I would never reach her impossible level of perfection. I know now that she was always a hidden narcissist, and for most of the 15 years I spent with her, I unfortunately put her happiness before mine. It's been 17 months since her, and not only am I a much happier and healthier person, but so are my children.